So today we're turning this into this. So first things first, we are marking where we are digging so that we can set our posts that are going upright. So we've got these extra one by fours. Um, so we're using that as kind of a straight edge uh, because we're coming 12 foot off the fence. And so we have spray painted the areas where we're digging and we've got four separate areas down through there. So the next step is to dig. So we got our holes dug yesterday and we got a section up and we're gonna show you step by step how we did this section but these are four befores running up parallel with a piece of four before in the middle as a spacer. And we have one down in the ground as well. And then a four by six running across. They're eight feet apart and it's eight foot from the bottom of the beam to the ground because we've ordered swings and that's how it works out. So you may want to customize your base based on whatever you're putting on it. But, and we've left a little bit of length on this side because we're going to put a beam across to this one so that this one over here will look just like that one and a beam running across to each one. So we're going to get busy making those. But let me show you the holes first. So we dug our holes three foot deep each and we stuck a brick down in the bottom because uh, we have extra bricks laying around. Now, a lot of people put gravel, totally could get that, but we're just using the brick. So we'll set everything down on that and we'll compensate for that as we cut the length of our boards coming up. And so we're going to get started building this section right here and we'll show you step by step how we did it. So now that we've got our wood cut to the size that we want it and our spacers and everything, we're going to put it all together. Now, this is the top of our swing. So we're leaving a five and a half inch gap right here at the top because that's how big our four by six is. It's gonna insert here the beam that goes across. It's actually three and a half by five and a half. So we're inserting it here and we'll put a bolt through that to tighten it up. But for now, we're gonna attach these spacers in here and put all this together. And so we're gonna drill a hole through here and then attach a carriage bolt. Now you gotta make sure, obviously you've got a long drill bit. Uh, so this one, just like the one that you get at the dentist office, and you just you know drill it through. So this is 10 and a half inches worth of wood. So, uh, but this one is about an 18 inch drill bit. So just make sure your drill bit is long enough to go all the way through. And this is a half inch drill bit. We are using half inch carriage bolts that are 12 inches long and carriage bolts that are galvanized so they, you won't have to worry about them rusting. And we also have bought these 5 8 inch washers that will slide up here uh, on the top of the carriage bolt and uh, and help strengthen it up. And then on the other side, we have half inch washers and half inch uh, nuts that will tighten it up with. So we're gonna get busy uh, putting this together and uh, the other one as well, and then uh, we'll put the beam on. So our carriage bolts are attached. You can see how that washer fits good and snug in there. Of course, we haven't even tightened up the other side yet. So we still have to come back and tighten these up with a wrench or whatever you're using, a drill. And then once that's tightened up, we'll move to our other one. Now the only difference between these two sets of posts is the length because of the way we're making ours. So if you're only making one section, then you'll make them identical if that's what you choose to do. But we're doing ours a little different because this one, actually we've, you notice there's a bigger gap up here. We've left 11 inches up here because we're gonna put our cross beam in here that goes to the other side. And then whenever the concrete sets up and everything's dry, we're gonna come back in and lay another cross beam across this one that'll go across the middle section. And you'll see that better here in just a moment. So we've just left a bigger space so that we can insert two beams down in here instead of one. And you'll see what we're talking about when we're done. Get in first. Ah, what are you doing in there?
So we got our one section done. We've got this section up, but it's not concreted in yet. We went ahead and put this beam up here just to make sure that everything was vibing together and make sure this was level, and it is. Now, we were talking about cutting the ends of it off, but we're gonna leave it the way it is because kinda of like the way that looks. And the only thing we're gonna do is put some bolts uh, right here and on the other side whenever we get this concreted into the ground. Now, before you put concrete in there, you wanna make sure that you're level. And we are looking good there. And we are looking good here. And if you come to the front, we are, should be looking good right there as well. And of course, we've already checked up high and those are level. So we are ready to put some concrete in those holes. Now, as we get ready to put some concrete in here, one of the things that I've seen other people do is put some coated screws down there so that your concrete can grab a hold of something. And we've got them on this side as well. We've got them in that hole over there. And we'll pour in a couple bags. We'll make sure that we're still level and we'll put some water in there and then we'll continue putting bags in there, making sure that it's level through that whole process. So let's get started doing that. So the concrete is in that one. And one of the things that we did was just kind of taper it off to where it's higher up here and lower down here. So it slopes down so that no water just gathers up and sits around that. It's treated wood. Now it'll last a long time, but it's not really, nothing's meant to last forever. So we're doing our best to make sure that water stays off of it. So slope it like that. And we are working on this hole right now. A few more bags will be done and let it set. Put all of our swings on. The next step is we are installing our hangers that our swings will hang from, as you can see right there. Uh, so let's show you what this looks like because we bought these off Amazon. And I'll tell you, these are actually really heavy duty. I'm kind of pretty impressed. But it says it has like a 10,000 pound weight limit. So I think we're in good shape. No 10,000 pounder is going to be swinging on this swing, are they? I don't believe so. So anyway, this, it comes with this, with the bolts are half inch and washers and kind of cool it comes with these stickers and you just find your spot that you're going to install them on on your wood and stick it on there and then drill your holes and then install the bolts in there so i'm going to show you how we do that so i put my sticker right here I, I had a spot marked already and i'm going to center it the best i can front to back i'm just eyeballing it and center it with that the best i can eyeballing it it's pretty close and then you take your uh, drill, and it's pretty simple. Just hit the target, that's all you do. And now you're gonna take your, your washers and your bolts and put them on correctly. You know, like so and then uh, you know we've got another drill here an impact drill probably work better in this case and get them started and that's how you install a hanger so we're going, I think it recommends 18 inches on our swings that we bought, but um, you know, we're, we're opting for 20 inches in between the hoops here. Uh, Cause we felt like that was a more, it was just better once we held it up there and kind of looked at it. So, but these are supposed to hold up to 10,000 pounds. So we should be good to go. So we're gonna hang our swing on there now. We are officially done. Cement would set up some more probably, but it's quite a bit for now. It's strong enough to handle this. So we uh, left four foot hanging off of this end and we put the little toddler baby swing over here because we have a grandbaby and who knows how many more we might have. A couple more swings and then we have this saucer swing. We have a separate video at the end of this. You can check it out if you're interested in buying one of those. They seem to like that swing. And of course, this is a pretty happy customer down here. Overall, really happy with it. It's pretty sturdy. 
We used three four by six uh, by 12s on those beams and we used eight four by four by 12s for the ones that are upright. And we used obviously any excess with sp for spacers in there. And that's what we have left. Uh, just a couple pieces of four by six and show you just a little up close here as far as the sway is coming right at you there and uh, there is a hair bit of sway in it not much i don't think it's anything for us to be concerned about but we're going to come back with a second phase here soon and put a tree house over here and attach it to that side make that side even stronger so overall pretty happy if you're you got any questions let us know Hopefully this inspires your next swing set project. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel.